Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. Now, believe it or not, kicking around most households, there's a few things that we can actually use in astronomy to help us. Uh, now, before I tell you about these uh, items, I just want to uh, point out that I I have used every single one of these in the past and some of them I still use today. Now, they, they may seem a little bit bizarre and a bit out there, some of them, but it's like I always say, don't knock it until you've tried it. So, without further ado, here's five household objects that we can use in astronomy. Now, in no particular order, coming in at number one is a drinking straw. Now, this is by means not a new idea at all, but what a drinking straw is really going to help you for is if you do own a, oops, sorry, the camera rocked a little bit then. Uh, if you do own a telescope, something like this, and what I mean by this is you may have noticed that there's something missing on it, and that is a finder scope. Now, not all telescopes, especially small telescopes like this, come with a finder scope. And if they do come provided with a finder scope, you may have found that they're pretty useless. Uh, you know, you, you, they, they, they don't really do what they're supposed to do. Well, a drinking straw, I can assure you, is 100% better than one of these cheap, uh, inferior finder scopes that get sometimes provided with telescopes of this size. Now, the way you would use a drinking straw as a finder scope is simply attach it uh, on something like this where the uh, uh, juice yield is a little bit higher. It would be ideal to maybe attach it to uh, the top of the juice shield here. Now, the way you fix it is entirely up to you. You can just use simply something simple as blue tack, something like that. Two, two little blobs of blue tack and a, and a drinking straw on top of the, uh, as long as it's parallel with the, the telescope tube, you can use that and, and obviously be able to get to sight down it. You can use it like a finder scope. Now, this is virtually an early finder scope because this is how they used to put, this is what the finder scopes were on early telescopes. And I suppose it's just a bit like uh, gun sights. And there's another little uh, option you can do if you're not keen on the drinking straw idea, is just to uh, manufacture some kind of simple gun sight. So you've got like a, a little notch on this end and a little, uh, you know, whatever, a just a little spike of something on this end and you can sight that up um, just the same um, which is going to be and, and it'll find objects so much easier than with these cheaper uh, finder scopes because if you've never if you have got a telescope like this that hasn't got a finder scope <coughs> excuse me you may have found just how difficult it is to find something as big and bright as the moon so you know you, you really do struggle when you come onto to the dimmer objects dimmer objects such as the planets and and such so, like I say, it sounds a little bit bizarre, but like I say, you just have the drinking straw parallel with the telescope, as close to the telescope as you can, so you can actually still spy down it. Uh, get the object in the uh, through the drinking straw, and it's pretty much guaranteed it'll be in the eyepiece as well. Now, of course, this isn't as ideal as, say, a, a red dot finder or an actual decent optical finder, but it'll certainly get you by until maybe you can't afford a finder at the minute, or whatever your circumstances it's certainly going to be a lot better than just trying to sight uh, objects without one so uh, now of course it doesn't have to be a drinking straw uh, any anything really that's light um, and, and the best straws if you are going to use a drinking straw is McDonald's milkshake straws you know the big fat ones um, they're the best ones uh, but something like that or a bit of plastic tubing anything like that will work like I say if you haven't got a finder scope Try a drinking straw. Number two, a sweeping brush. Yeah, believe it or not, folks, a sweeping brush is a, a brilliant little tool. Now, this is another oldie, but goodie. Now, what you would use a sweeping brush for is this way round, and they make 
perfect makeshift tripods for such as binoculars. Now, if you're like me who loves uh, binocular astronomy, you may have found that it gets very tiring on your arms and also to appreciate targets, even something as nice and big and bright as the moon, it's nice to get the object nice and steady so you can the detail starts uh, to come out in the moon. And if the binoculars are wobbling all over the place, it's not always that easy. An upturned broomstick is your solution. Now you turn it over just like this. I hope this is high enough so the camera can see, but it's upside down you, and then you would just simply rest your elbows on it like this. Um, and then hold the binoculars like this. I mean, obviously, I haven't got my binoculars on you at the minute. And as you can see, straight away, you've got all your scope. You can move with your wrist like this. Obviously, straight up, still are going to be a bit of an issue. But that is just, I mean, you can, if you just try it now with a, with a brush, you can see how, feel how stable everything feels. It's a perfect little solution for, uh, for if you haven't got a tripod for your, for your binoculars. And like I say, this is no way a new idea. I mean, bird spotters and photographers have been using these kind of platforms for years. The only thing I would say is maybe it's probably a good idea to throw maybe a, an old towel, an old clean towel or something over there uh, before you start resting your elbows on it. Because, you know, we don't always remember exactly what we sweep up. Mind you, maybe I should have done that before I started this video. Oof. Where's the antibacterial? Number three, bed sheets. Now, any sheets, big blankets, anything like that. Now, there isn't a night that I don't go outside armed with some big sheets. Why? Because they are perfect screens for localized light pollution. Now, if like me, uh, you've got an annoying street light or maybe a, um, a very annoying uh, security light, neighbor security light, which is on 24 seven. Now, these are an absolute menace to uh, us astronomers, um, especially for your dark adaptation. Now, if you've got bottle seven skies, you'll always have bottle seven skies. It's not going to darken the skies for you. But what it'll do, what you can do with bed sheets is shield that offensive localized light pollution. Now, obviously this, not everybody's gonna be able to do this, but if you can, just something simple like hanging some lines up, good old fashioned washing lines, um, to, to block out that offending light, Trust me, it'll be the best thing you ever do. Uh, you know, you may say, well, that's a lot of messing about. You know, I've got all the telescope to set up and the rest of it. It isn't, honestly, especially if you can leave some permanent lines up there where you just literally, and then you can use the sheets to just cover your telescope if you're not using it. Uh, that's what I basically do with mine. And I always, always go out, because like I say, I've got a... Uh, terrible security light that's on 24 7 and then I've got a street light at back of me but I, but either side I've got a garden shed and some trees so basically when I block one light off and I block the other light off I've got my own little makeshift <laughs> observatory if you like and this is like I say when you are um you're nice dark adapted and you've got you know you, you, your eyes are nicely dark dark adapted to your surroundings if you've got a offending light in your vision you're guaranteed that you're going to look at it at some point um you know if <laughs> you know just to glance at all oh, that annoying light and as soon as you do that that's it that's, that's your night vision gone and that can take up to 40 minutes for it to like readjust your eyes. So it's just worth, if you can just hang those bed sheets up, good idea as well is, is, is obviously they want to be pretty thick sheets, maybe two sheets, line them up. And if they're a darker color, it doesn't matter if they're a, a, like a white sheet or something. It's just that dark sheets, you know, are not as reflective to light as, as the, the white ones is. But um, if you're struggling to find some deep sky targets um, that you, you know they're there and you can't understand why they're not, you can't see them, localized light pollution can be a real issue for that. And if you do block that light off with just hanging a few sheets up, 
go for that elusive target that you you couldn't see and uh, have another look and i'll i'm pretty sure you'll uh, you some of these uh, it brings the contrast up in the eyepiece that's what it actually does um because don't forget and, and it will also bring the contrast up in general because it's actually stopping some of that stray light coming in down into the telescope tube so uh like I say bed sheets or any kind of sheets are a perfect block or shield for localized light pollution number four is a doormat a welcome mat a mat that you wipe your muddy boots on whatever you want to call it now at the time of recording this video winter is just around the corner this means it's going to get pretty cold out there and the problem is with our hobby is we don't do much moving about <laughs> and that's the worst thing in the cold if you think about it you go outside and you stood still at the eyepiece this is terrible for your feet because like i would say 90 percent of us out there getting cold feet is probably one of the one of the things that gets us back inside and the way to combat this, and no matter how many pairs of socks you wear or how thick your shoes are, if you're stood on frozen ground or near to frozen ground, that is going to eventually transfer through your footwear and into your feet itself, and you're going to get cold. So standing on something like a doormat, block that frozen ground out. If one of the tips you, you, you want to try uh, this winter, try this one. Trust me, if you do suffer from cold feet, stand on a doormat now it doesn't again it doesn't have to be a doormat and the reason why i say a doormat is they are pretty seasonal that means they they, they, they will go all through the winter and still be pretty grippy because obviously slippery when wet has to be noted in this little tip don't throw anything down there that's you know pretty thick and okay why it's dry if frost comes or a little bit of anything like that it's going to be slippy but with these uh, doormats I can't remember what the material they're made out I know it's the natural fiber ones as I'm talking about usually say welcome on them uh, are perfect they're nice and small they're just perfect for throwing down where the eyepiece is and you're not going to trip over that or slip on that in the middle of the night uh, so yeah if there's one tip uh, to try it's definitely this one because if this is your first winter uh, trust me you're in for a pretty uh, ride uh, your first winter with astronomy it gets pretty cold out there uh, no matter what part of the world you live in uh, and while we're on the subject of that I will leave a link to a I have done a full video video sorry on staying warm uh, for winter astronomy and little tips to, to help you stay warm I'll leave a link for that one in the description below and finally number five sunglasses now how on earth can sunglasses help us in the dark <laughs> well one thing I always always advise uh, to new people especially when the uh, the first thing they're going to look at is the moon and it's always good to get into the habit of using a moon filter the moon is an incredibly bright dazzling target and you may find that once you've looked at the moon you take your eye away and it's, it's like having a flash in your eye you get that floating blue blob all, all, all over well this is no good for our hobby you know we, we it's nice to look at the at the moon but put a moon filter on and then it's going to dramatically uh, help you uh, night vision for a start but it's also going to increase the detail that you can actually see now if you don't own a moon filter even though they're pretty cheap i bet you do own a pair of sunglasses and there's absolutely no reason at all why you can't wear a pair of sunglasses and look at the moon um now after all all a moon filter is is pretty much a pair of sunglasses or a part of the lens it's just colored glass most of them are as well uh, anyway and uh, like i say i now i used to have a friend that had a specifically uh, made pair of lunar sunglasses well i say specifically made he popped one of the lenses out and so he would just he would have these so he could still see like you know in the dark around but yet he had one eye that was shielded that he would just use uh, for observing the moon it's a great idea it does work you may look a little bit strange wearing sunglasses in the dark but after all you are in the dark who can see you anyway <laughs> 
Another great use for sunglasses in our hobby is if you have to nip inside for anything. Before you go in, just pop your sunglasses on. This is going to help again uh, to maintain your night vision. It's going to protect your eyes from that horrible artificial light bombarding your pupils. You know, so that's it. That's your night vision gone. Put a pair of sunglasses on. It's going to save, maintain your night vision for when you go back outside exploring the night sky. So there you go folks, five household objects you can use in astronomy. And like I say, I use a lot of these, the broomstick, the, the, the sweeping brush, I use, I still use, the doormat every time, the sheets, I always take out with me. So uh, I'm sure that one of these little tips that uh, you will find some use for. Well, if you've watched this far, folks, thank you so much for watching. And uh, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. Make sure that you've got the notifications turned on uh, because I do do uh, regular uploads for the new astronomer and you don't want to miss the next one. You never know, it might be just that video you've been looking for. Well, in the meantime, folks, take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.